Hey guys, how you doing? This video goes with your 6D notes on Roman expansion. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about this. Now, what I want you guys to think about before we go any farther with Roman expansion is I want you to understand that while the city of Rome is located right here. Rome doesn't immediately start to develop as a country. Very much like Greece, Rome develops as a city-state. It's founded around the year 700 BCE, about the same time that Athens was still a monarchy, and it starts to develop. It'll eventually become a republic around the year 450 BCE, which, for those of you who've been paying attention in class, you'd remember that that's during the time of the um, golden age of Athens. So during this time, Rome itself is very much centralized right in around the city. Like Greece, it's a city-state. There's a little bit of trade by water, but not a whole lot else other than that. What we are going to talk about today is how Rome expands out and eventually becomes what we know as the Roman Empire. Wrong slide. All right, so on our Roman expansion notes, first, before they go any farther, they've got to take away Italy. Okay, by the year 265, Rome is going to have conquered all of Italy. All right, I want you guys to understand that the Romans were extremely tolerant towards their defeated enemies. And this is going to help them maintain conquered territory. Now, this is something that we've seen before. This is a pattern that we saw with the Persians. It was one of the reasons the Persian Empire was successful. And then what I want you guys to also see here is they don't do it all at once. So while we said the city, the Republic of Rome was founded around 450 BCE, it's this very light yellow here before 300 BCE. So 300 BCE, again, guys, that's 20 years after the fall of Alexander that we're talking here, just to make sure we understand time-wise. And then so in that next decade, by 290 BCE, they're going to take out a couple of these neighboring civilizations, the Etruscans and the Samnites, and expand. And then by 272, they're going to grab the rest of the boot. So, again, by 265 BCE, Rome is going to have conquered all of Italy. Now, what I want you to see here is, as Rome is continuing to expand, we'll go with a bigger guy, and we'll do them in red, to include the Italian boot. Spectacular drawing skills that I have, I know. I want you guys to remember that we have the city of Carthage over here. Now, we haven't talked a whole lot about Carthage, but what Carthage is, is I want us to think back to the very beginning of the year when we talked about our first early civilizations. We talked about seven of them, and one of them was the Phoenicians. We didn't talk about the Phoenicians very much, just that they were merchants, they were traders, that lived up here along the Mediterranean Sea near Asia Minor, and they sailed around. And their big contribution, the only reason we really talk about them earlier, is that they developed the phonetic alphabet, which is the alphabet that we use today and you see written all over this screen right now. Now, the Phoenicians spread throughout the Mediterranean Sea with different colonies around the area, and one of them becomes the city of Carthage. Now, Carthage is established long before Rome grows in power, long before Rome's going to grow in power. So, we've got these two city-states here, and F Carthage isn't really a city-state. They're more of a trading empire. They occupy all of North Africa and a good chunk of Spain. Okay? So, as Rome begins to grow between the years 265 and 300 BCE, pardon me, 300 and 265 BC, we'll say it in the right order. As Rome begins to grow, their trade's going to expand. And they're going to start running into situations where they're butting heads with their natural neighbors, Carthage. And this is eventually going to lead to a debate and an argument that's going to lead to a war. So, when Rome begins to start expanding around the Mediterranean, we have what we know as the Punic Wars. And Rome is going to fight a series of three wars with Carthage between the years 264 and 146 BCE. The main cause of these wars was competition over trade. Now, if you've been in class that day, we watched a video um, covering the first two Punic Wars and talking about um, Hamilcar and Hannibal. If you want to watch that video again, all you got to do is go to your Fusion page, scroll down, 
where it says links, and we're in the unit six on Rome, and it'll be your Punic Wars video right there, okay? But I will give you guys the short version today. There are three Punic Wars. The Romans win the first one, place stiff penalties on the Carthaginians, that keeps them upset and makes them angry and want to start a second war. And now the great Carthaginian general during the second Punic War is actually going to invade the Italian peninsula by marching north through Spain and the Alps to attack from the north. And he actually nearly conquers all of Rome. So let's go ahead and put this up here on the map real quick. All right, our Alps. Now we have said before that the Alps guys were a barrier to invasion. Well, they're a barrier to a lesser man, and Hannibal is not that. He marches his army here, and then takes them through the Alps and into Italy. And his army is not just horses and soldiers, but he also takes elephants with him. And once Hannibal is finally in to the Italian plain, he is going to spend years terrorizing the mainland, marching up and down, winning significant battles, including Cannae, as well as others. And he's only finally going to be defeated... He's never quite able to capture the city of Rome. He's never able to take out the city. But he's only finally defeated when a guy named Scipio Africanus decides to, instead of continuing to engage him on the Roman plains, to attack the city of Carthage. Hannibal has to come back and defend, and that leads to the end of the Second Punic War. There is a Third Punic War that is going to end with Carthage being defeated and sacked and burned to the ground. And what's going to happen as a result of the Punic Wars, obviously. The most important one is going to be we have Roman victory. All right, Rome is going to win. The second one is going to be the destruction of Carthage, which I want you guys to understand is also going to bring with it, is also going to bring with it no more rivals. That's an ugly color green, so we'll go something else. No more rivals. Sorry. No more rivals for the Romans. And what else is going to happen over here is all of this that is green is going to become red. So Rome is now going to take all of this territory that had been Carthage's, and they're going to have it as their own. So Rome has now conquered a lot of territory. Now, the other thing that's going to happen here, guys, is if you think about this, is there's no longer this trade barrier. It's like Carthage basically ceases to exist at this point in time. I mean, the city's still there. But they no longer have this trading opponent. So now, Rome is free to trade. And when you can open up new markets to trade to, you're going to have an expansion of trade and a growth of wealth. That's basic economics. If you can have more people to sell to, you have more money you can make. So these are the three big things that come out of the Punic Wars. is the destruction of Carthage, the Roman victory, and the expansion of trade and wealth for Rome. Moving on from there, we're not done. Over the next 300 years from the end of the Punic Wars, so from the year 146 on, the Roman Empire is going to spread. Eventually it's going to include all the Mediterranean basin, including Africa, Asia, Europe, and our Hellenistic world in Eastern Mediterranean. Okay, remember the Hellenistic world is that area where Alexander had dominated and he blended Persian, Greek, and Egyptian cultures into one culture? Well, that's what we're talking about. Okay, and they're not just going to stop there, too. They're not just going to stick to the Mediterranean basin. They go north as well. And they're going to enter Western Europe, capture territories in Gaul, which is present-day France, portions of Germany, and eventually half of the British Isles. It's a massive empire that looks like this when it's all said and done. This is the Roman Empire in CE 17, very near its peak. Now, remember, that's in 117 CE. The, Car the Punic Wars, guys, ended in 146 BCE. So this is almost 300 years later. Okay, I need you to understand that there was some change here in time. But this is a massive, massive, massive empire that the Romans are going to eventually conquer. And on the next couple of slides, guys, just take a minute to glance back and look at some of our other old empires, just so that you remember what they are. 
in Persia, we are talking Turkey, Anatolia, the Fertile Crescent, Egypt, and then parts of India out here. The Mauryan Empire, the Mauryan Empire was in India. It was based off of the Indus River and actually included most of the rest of the subcontinent. A little bit on the point it didn't have. The Guptas, remember G, Guptas for Ganges River and for Golden Age are on the Ganges River. And then lastly, Alexander is Greece because his dad, Philip II, conquered that. Anatolia, the Fertile Crescent, Egypt, and then out towards India before he finally goes. And then as we said on the previous picture with the Romans. And that's all, guys.